a Cyrex outbreak. For the ground crews, it will demand many man hours in the field to determine the extent of infestation. But the picture's changing. Aerial photo surveys of large plantations will save many man hours of conventional ground searching. It would also make possible detection of trees for the evaluating of parasites. This is Infrared aerial photography is one of the techniques being used in a new offensive against the Cyrex wood wasp. And you can distinctly see three classes of tree health. These bright red trees are healthy, the yellow trees are unhealthy, and these green trees are quite dead. Well, that's, um, sure shows that. It looked as though it might become the scourge of the 60s, but the worst never happened. Nevertheless, the arrival of Cyrex noctilio in Australia was greeted with alarm. 4th of March, 1952. Cyrex was discovered in Pinus radiata plantations near Hobart. For the next 10 years, foresters attempted to eradicate Cyrex by felling and burning infested trees. While this achieved some reduction in the numbers of Cyrex, it failed to control the spread of the wasp. In 1961, the insect was found on the Australian mainland. Not till then did a concerted effort get underway to find other methods of attacking the pest. Cyrex noctilio. In its native northern hemisphere, a minor problem kept in check by its natural enemies. In Australia, released from the constraints of these same predators, it became a major threat to the softwood industry. All species of Pinus are susceptible to Cyrex attack. However, radiata pines are more vulnerable than others, and these comprise about 80% of Australian plantations. Cyrex usually attack the less vigorous trees. Even slight damage through storm or fire will render a healthy tree attractive to the wasp. Suppressed or damaged trees release substances that attract Cyrex. In preparation for egg laying, the female drills a hole through the bark into the wood. When laying, she injects a mucus and a symbiotic fungus on which the wasp larva subsequently feeds. The combined effect of the mucus and the fungus kills the tree. The mucus is stored in reservoirs in the female Cyrex. In this photograph through a microscope, the hyphae of the symbiotic fungus Amylosterium are penetrating the tracheids of the host tree. Only in wood with a reduced water content will the fungus grow, and only in the presence of well-developed fungus will the young Cyrex larvae develop satisfactorily. The Cyrex larvae then bore through the wood near the bark, going deeper as they grow. They leave behind them chewed up frass in galleries. The larva has a characteristic spike at the back which provides leverage when chewing. When fully fed, the Cyrex larvae turn back towards the bark and enter a pupil or resting stage. After about three weeks, they've changed into adults and chew their way out of the wood. Cyrex was first discovered in Victoria, east of Melbourne, in December 1961, and soon after in Gippsland. In rapid succession, new finds extended the known area of infestation across southern Victoria. A national Cyrex fund was established to investigate ways and means of controlling the wasp. Research on Cyrex began at Hobart in 1962 with the Forest Research Institute, uh, the Waite Agricultural Research Institute from Adelaide and CSIRO being involved. Uh, as part of its interest in biological control, CSIRO set up a station the next year at Silwood Park in England under Mr Frank Wilson. Uh, then a worldwide search for natural enemies of Cyrex began with help from the Commonwealth Institute of Biological Control. The new approach to the Cyrex problem was biological control. In all, 24 species of parasites, all members of the wasp family, were imported. Ideally, the combination of parasites should provide that there is at least one species to attack Cyrex at any stage, whenever it occurs. 
Ibelia leucospoides adults emerge in summer and attack Cyrex larvae as they hatch. Ibelia rufopes drusenii emerges in spring and attacks the Cyrex larvae hatching from eggs that have remained dormant from the previous year because of high water content in the wood. Ibelia lays its egg in the young Cyrex larva shortly before or after it hatches from the egg. Rissa persuasoria, Megarissa nortoni. By contrast, Rissa and Megarissa parasitize large Cyrex larvae in spring before they pupate and change to the adult Cyrex stage. All these parasites find their host by smell. They detect the odor associated with the fungus injected by the Cyrex. The female Rissa or Megarissa stings the Cyrex larva to immobilize it and then lays an egg on the larva. The young parasite larva hatches within a few days and settles down to feed by sucking out the contents of the host larva. In about five weeks, the Cyrex larva is destroyed. The parasite larva then enters a resting stage, some pupating within a few weeks, others after the winter. Thus, some adults emerge in early summer to attack those Cyrex larvae emerging late in the season. But Rissa proved not very efficient and did not spread rapidly. Megarissa, with its amazingly long ovipositor, can reach host larvae deeper in the wood. So there were two main groups of parasites, those attacking the very young Cyrex larvae and those attacking the large, well-grown larvae. With the combined release of the three chief species, Ibelia, Rissa and Megarissa, the result, in terms of their effect on the numbers of Cyrex emerging, was staggering. In the late 50s, Cyrex were emerging virtually unchecked. But in 1960, Ibelia and Rissa were introduced and soon made inroads into the emerging Cyrex population. However, it was the introduction of Megarissa in 1965 which really turned the tide. By 1971, a virtual equilibrium was established with the numbers of emerging Cyrex at between only 20 to 30 percent of their former figure. The remarkable success of parasites was already becoming obvious to field workers. At one Tasmanian site, 24 female Megarissa were released where a few Ibelia were already present, although not very effective. By the third year, 90 percent of that year's generation of Cyrex were destroyed. 84 percent as a result of Megarissa. To measure the survival rate and breeding performance of parasite species, counts are made of parasites emerging from trees. The number and species trapped in the tree cages give the field teams a sample of the parasite population in the plantation. In Tasmania, in this plantation, four species of parasites destroyed about 70% of the 1971 generation of Cyrex. While at Scottsdale, a native parasite, Certinotus tasmaniensis, has become adapted to attack Cyrex. Approaching the Cyrex problem from another angle, the Forestry and Timber Bureau has established that some radiata pines have greater natural resistance to attack. This tree has reacted to Cyrex overposition by releasing polyphenols to counteract the toxic effects of the symbiotic fungus injected by the wasp. Can we breed for Cyrex resistant trees? Research here has been from the tree side, being mainly an investigation of the mechanisms of tree resistance and whether these mechanisms are under environmental or genetic control. Results to date have shown there to be a genetic base to tree resistance, particularly as demonstrated by the reactions of twigs to weak solutions of Cyrex mucus. Whether this resistance will hold in a field situation under conditions of insect attack is a subject of further investigation. Other experiments here are designed to test the absolute resistance of these trees to Cyrex attack by inducing an attack experimentally. 
In parallel, we shall also test the attractiveness of these trees to Cyrex attack to determine if that is part of the mechanism of tree resistance. The parasite program had undoubtedly proved an effective control measure. This and the vigilance of forestry officers in detecting strikes through ground and aerial surveys. But with infestation spreading into the vast plantations of northeastern Victoria and westwards towards those of the Mount Gambier area of South Australia, any large build-up in numbers of Cyrex could lead to a massive population explosion. To guard against this, a more devastating weapon was essential. CSIRO scientists found just this in the humble nematode. We found that nematodes, or roundworms, parasitize and sterilize many species of Cyrex and related wood wasps. As many as a hundred parent nematodes, up to two centimeters long, lie in the body cavity of a Cyrex larva, absorbing food from its blood. During the Cyrex pupil stage, each parent nematode releases several thousand juveniles and these rapidly migrate to the Cyrex reproductive organs. Parasitic nematodes had already been observed in Cyrex in New Zealand, where they were known to sterilize the eggs of female Cyrex. What was not known was that these nematodes could live and reproduce independently of the Cyrex. Dr. Bedding made the surprising discovery that the nematode Deladinus exists in two forms. One parasitizes Cyrex wasps, and the other is completely free-living, feeding on the fungus that Cyrex inject into the wood. Moreover, although Deladinus can survive in either form indefinitely, it can switch from one form to the other, the deciding factor being whether or not the nematode egg is laid in the vicinity of the Cyrex larva. Juvenile nematodes within the host Cyrex enter the testes of the male Cyrex or the eggs of the female. Thus, the female lays sterile eggs containing large numbers of young, free-living nematodes. Cultures of nematodes and fungus are added to sterilized wheat and water. Within four to six weeks, between three and ten million nematodes can be harvested from each flask. These nematodes can then be distributed, either by releasing parasitized Cyrex or inoculated into Cyrex-struck trees already containing the fungus. Nematodes have only to be mixed with aerated gelatin before they're ready for inoculation into pine trees. Sections of the inoculated trees can then be distributed in this and other plantations to encourage the nematodes to establish themselves. Under the microscope, the eggs of the free living form of the nematode are visible within the wood fibers of the tree. In the presence of Cyrex larvae, the free-living juvenile nematodes in the wood can mature to the parasitic form. Parasitism is achieved by the nematode boring into the Cyrex larva. Its progeny enter the testes of the adult male or the eggs of the female, causing sterility. Because Deladinus can only survive in the presence of the symbiotic fungus, its attack is restricted to Cyrex and associated species. Neither does it harm the parasites. Subsequent field checks on other trees in the plantation prove the presence of nematodes. Their success in colonizing Cyrex struck trees can be instanced by the experience in one Tasmanian plantation. 
Here, Deladinus spread from a small localized liberation to parasitize 84% of the Cyrex after only four years. In another forest, where liberation was more extensive, a level of 85% was attained in only one year. Biological control measures, combined with a forest management plan of tree thinning to keep plantations vigorous, are so far proving a resounding success in turning the tide of Cyrex infestation. Confidence in the softwood industry is stimulating new technology. Reducing the incidence of Cyrex attack lowers the proportion of saw logs rejected due to timber damage. The outlook in 1952. Now, effective biological control and efficient forest management. But the achievement of any measure of continuing success demands a coordinated program combining forest surveillance, parasite liberation, and constant monitoring of results. These are the weapons in the new assault on Cyrix.